Good morning everyone, welcome to the class of marketing research and analysis. In the last class uh, we had uh, discussed about case study and uh, descriptive research. We could not cover up the research error part which we will be doing it in today's session. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> today uh, apart from the research errors which uh, is always there in any research process as I had uh, said in the last class. Uh, we will also discuss about the data, primary and secondary data <coughs> that is very important in any, any research uh, uh, study. First of all, let us understand what is the data. There, were, there are subjects like data analysis, data analytics, you know, uh, everywhere around and uh, what does it actually mean? What is a data? So, a data is something like, you know, uh, you can understand a data is uh, a piece of information, a piece or bit of information, right? Bit of information. So, uh, these information bits actually do not make a sense until unless you can uh, really uh, bring it together and make some real sense out of it, right? So, how does one one form collect data and uh, or any even an, any researcher collect data? That's of very important, uh, is large importance, uh, uh, you know, in any study. So, let us see what exactly it means. So, where does data come from? As it says, data uh, comes from everywhere. In fact, if you keep your eyes and ears open, data is everywhere around you. It comes from, let us say, from for example, in the insurance companies, claims, uh, you know, medications, the procedures, diagnosis, firms with demographic data, productivity data, or let us say, take a census where you have the data of people of various religions, uh, different gender, and uh, uh, their income group, all this data, right. So, data is everywhere, you are all flooded with data. But the question is, what kind of data do we require? Is of one uh, prime question to any researcher. So, uh, primary data. So, two types of data basically that we discuss. One is primary. So, and the second is called secondary. Now, both have their own importance, right? Uh, primary and secondary. So, primary, as the name suggests, it is primary. That means primary means basic. So, basic data. So, to understand, these are originated by the researcher for the specific purpose of addressing the problem at hand. Now, suppose you have a problem as we uh, you know uh, discussed earlier in the class, every problem is different. One might think ki this problem is very similar to another problem, there might be similar, but it is not same. right? So, whenever the researcher is designing or working on a topic, he has to understand that if he has a particular or a typical problem in hand, then his data requirement has to be separately or done in a dis different manner or has to be collected separately. Okay. So, it depends upon the specific purpose of the per, uh, you know the purpose of the research, right. If you remember in one of the classes also I had said without a problem definition or without addressing the problem properly, one cannot a researcher cannot ever uh, conduct a research properly. Right. So, the let us understand the collection of primary data involves all the 6 steps, steps of the marketing research process. Now, what 6 steps are we talking about? The 6 steps that we are talking about are basically are basically uh, fr which starts with the you know problem right and it uh, be in between you have the design right then collection all these steps together till, till the report report writing analysis and the finally the report okay so uh, let's take uh, this so the classification of the primary source right so any data that is on the, you can understand another way also any data which is directly connected from the field that means the the uh, the the area or the scope of research right or from the directly from the respondent directly it is the primary research so what are these basically uh, observation. So, you observe the uh, uh, participant or the respondent as you did in uh, exploratory research earlier. Projective techniques. So, you projected, you understand, you understand somebody by asking like a third person, right, and understanding what he is trying to say about somebody else. So, that projects his own thinking process 
to for somebody else, but that is one way of understanding how the respondent is thinking. Then is interview method we said in a depth interview in a, spe is a special case where uh, the uh, you know the uh, a, a interview is taken of a expert in a particular area so that we gain a knowledge about some uh, exp, uh, some specialized areas maybe of medical of defense it could be politics anything right survey is a very popular method survey in fact survey uh, also sometimes uh, you know the questionnaire goes into the survey so survey is very popular in the sense you uh, do a uh, uh, you know try to collect data from a large pool of respondents and through a maybe through a questionnaire and finally experiments in the labs for example or uh, the experiment that you do on uh, in any any particular uh, field, maybe it is or uh, even sports, right? Ki wa, wa, how does one particular medicine work on an athlete? Could be a kind of an experiment. Okay. So let me start with this case. This is a very popular uh, uh, case. In fact, although it's uh, many people might not be knowing its origin, Wrigley's is a uh, chewing gum. If you have heard about it, Wrigley's chewing gum. It was in 1891 that William Wrigley started this, uh, you know, what was he doing at that time? He was selling soaps and baking powder and he was giving gum, sticks of gums, you know, chewing gums like as a free incentive. At that time, the stereotype was that women would only use chewing gum, right. But Wrigley, William Wrigley observed a very interesting uh, trend. He saw that his products that is soaps and baking powder were actually getting sold not because they were good, but rather they were getting sold because of this free incentive that is the gums. So, he thought maybe this is a product which has become more popular than the main product. right? So, what did he do? He came out with two different brands. One is the sweet 16 orange and the lota gum. Right. So, he observed a trend ki, and observing the trend, he thought there is a potential uh, product uh, you know, uh, in the, which, which could be given to the consumers. In 19, 1893, Wrigley's came up with the two most iconic brands, Wrigley's Spearmint and Juicy Fruit right? and everybody knows it became history after that. Right? It is a, one of the classic cases of uh, in marketing that we teach ki how a product became such a popular product and uh, if, if a proper research would not have been done uh, through the primary data, then maybe they would never have understood the potential of this product. Okay. Now, what are the advantages? Primary data as I said, right? it is off on the field, the data collected from the field. So, uh, the advantage as it is saying, obviously you know the problem, so you have defined the problem. So, when you have defined the problem, automatically your interpretation interpretation becomes better. Okay. So, you know the problem, so you collect the data according to your objective. So, when you have collected the data according to your objective, automatically your interpretation would be much superior. Right? Issues of uh, uh, importance or the issues that are more specific to the case of research can be addressed in a better way. Right? Third thing is efficient spending for information that means time and resource and money are two constraints for any research. Right? So, these two, cons these two uh, resources have to be utilized carefully. One cannot say that I am conducting a research for 6 years, 7 years, 10 years. Yeah, that is possible in some pure research, basic research, but in applied research, we always have short term uh, you know, time durations. So, a researcher has to understand that time and money both are a constraint and one has to spend wisely. Okay. And even there is a problem, if you take too much of a time, maybe in uh, applied research, there is a problem of the trend completely changing. So, maybe by the time your research is over, already the trend has changed and the product uh, or the idea which you had might not be any longer valid okay. and addressing the specific research issue and you have a greater control. Why you have a greater control? Because you are you have designed the instrument, you have you have you have understood the sample, so you know whom to collect from and what to ask everything right. So, you have a better control. Similarly, secondary data on the other hand is nothing but a primary data which has been done already earlier. Okay. So, secondary data are data which have already been collected for the purposes 
other than the problem at hand. So, as I said, every research is different. So, your problem is very specific or uh, you know important to you, but it might not be exact the same case, but somebody else has done a similar situation or a, uh, under a similar uh, uh, situation, a, sim a similar looking study earlier, right. So, these data could be useful for you for your research in the future, okay. Obviously, this is quick because the data has been already collected and it is less expensive, right. Purpose of the secondary data is to extract the relevant information from other sources like previous studies, okay. So, previous studies for example, let us say a company wants to know ki what would be the future of a particular uh, let us say brand of chocolates. So, he can say he can look at the past records of other companies who have done some similar kind of ex experiments in the market. Uh, had they been successful? Uh, had they not been successful? If they had been successful or not successful then why it had happened? So, all what was the right channel of distribution? What prices had they managed? How did they promote their products? So, everything was in detail, right. So, fact findings <coughs> descriptive information to support research is what uh, secondary data helps you in. Third thing is it also helps you in building of models basically models are nothing but specifying relationships. Now, when I am saying for example, let us say life is never a linear relationship although although we always say it is linearity to be checked normality linearity, but the truth is uh, it is sorry the truth is ki it is not linear right. You cannot say A affects B all the time in a linear fashion, it could be a curvilinear also, right. There might be, uh, so what I am saying is uh, there might not be one single relationship right? like A affects B, rather it could be A affects B, B affects uh, C and then C affects uh, D, right, A also affects D. So, it could be a multitude of relationships or a multiple relationships which can be affecting the entire uh, study or as I said it might not be linear, but rather there might be an angular or it might be curvilinear uh, you know uh, relationship. So, in such uh, events model building becomes comes to a very handy uh, handy very handy right. Finally, data mining <coughs> which is done through the exploration exploring data through the computer. So, you must have seen nowadays uh, the uh, you know uh, for example, social uh, sites for example, Facebook or uh, Twitter or for example, all these things even you can see uh, Samsung database or uh, let us say IBM database whatever you th think of the sites right. Now, there are uh, n number of tweets, n number of uh, comments coming into it through these comments through by understanding this uh, comments can we understand the trend of the market. For example, if you have ever visited you must have for example, any uh, e-commerce site. Now, when you go into an e-commerce site, you buy something or you make a purchase or even you show an interest, you will see the next time when you go visit the site or you uh, even checking some other site, it comes that uh, you have shown interest or you will be shown products which are something very close to you. You do not even realize ki why it is happening, but the truth is ki somebody is already uh, you know kind of a, a, a tracking you, right. So, that means uh, I think in observation in uh, when I was talking about uh, observational methods, one of the things was trace analysis, which I do not know whether I have covered or not or I have missed. So, trace analysis was something uh, where you try you every respondent leaves a trace like you know they say uh, after every crime the, the, the suspect leaves a, 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 you know a, a trace right. So, this is good enough to understand ki what are his motivations, what are his underlying intentions, what are his uh, thought processes, what does he like, what he does not like everything ok. So, uh, uh, it helps in discovering the trends right. So, some of the secondary data I have given example uh, county government surveillance data, national statistics, clinic, school right. Now, this is a case very interesting. Now, many of the countries you will see that uh, the aging population is becoming uh, higher and higher right. Uh, India being an excep exception where rather we have a large pool of youngsters, but many of the countries in the world like Japan, USA and uh, others they are facing a problem of age group higher age group right. So, when a higher age group public is going to come 
it is not that in a day you will be uh, getting ready for them right. So, uh, it takes time to prepare the market to prepare the nation for it. So, in such a situation <coughs> there is a potential shortage of young workers which has been seen that it would be a potential problem. So, companies have come up with solutions like understanding ki what would people require in the future. So, to understand that fast food restaurants for example, have moved from a high touch that means a personal service to a high tech service right. So, <coughs> now what is happening here touch screen kiosks is being a popular trend that provides a new avenue to cut labor cost and increasing customer service. So, when workers would not be there automatically you have to de develop uh, you know so not develop you have to depend more on uh, the machine the technology right. So, maybe that is one reason you must have be seeing around the world there is a there is a huge upsurge in uh, research in robotics and use of robots as in even daily life ok. <coughs> a comparison the primary and the secondary data. So, as you had understood uh, the collection is for the problem at hand purpose and this is for other problems right. So, uh, this is very involved that means, you are a part of the process it is easy because obviously, it is there somewhere and you just have to get it. Collection cost is obviously high you have to travel you have to go to the field or you have to pay the respondent this is comparatively low per unit cost right and this is long and this is short, but that does not make uh, the primary data a, a weak case rather it is a stronger case right. Secondary data all said and done could have some own limitations let us see. Now, first of all let us start with the advantages less times uh, expensive and time saving no need to reinvent the wheel because already it has been done by somebody. So, if it is close to your problem at hand or your research topic, so you can follow that you can use it. It can result in unforeseen discoveries. Now, something that can uh, you can realize without even getting into the market by crunching those data or analyzing the trend. For example, is there a move in the market that people want to buy customized shoes? Now, yes could be possible. Now, it has been seen day by day with obesity where with problems medical problems people want uh, are not getting the right fit of shoes. Now, companies have realized that this could be a new potential area there where they can find new customers. Even if you can see the uh, paint industry for example, the paint industry like Asian paints and burgers they do uh, advertise uh, that you can make your own uh, color you can have your own color right. So, they give an option and they ask you to make your own color and then you can uh, uh, you know uh, you can say what you like. <coughs> so, these are some of the advantages now what are the disadvantages maybe it has been collected for a purpose that does not match your need this is important and very very important why it is very important sometimes we do have an ad, a habit of adjusting and research is not about adjusting research is about knowing the right thing. So, if you are trying to adjust oh ok my research is very similar to that I can adjust no 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 research is not about adjustment please be very careful about it right. Maybe out of date for you what you want to analyze this maybe was done in 9, 2000 and let us say 5 and in 2016 17 already the trend has changed right may not have been uh, collected long enough for detecting trends. Now, this trends obviously, this is connected to this. So, the trends have already changed access may be difficult or costly when data is collected for a commercial reason. So, sometimes, but uh, still I would say the per unit cost remains uh, less uh, you know uh, less because it is a large database. So, that is a uh, uh, investment might be high. So, uh, sometimes the aggregation process the way it has been aggregated the data might be unsuitable for your need right. This is a very important thing again. So, the, there might be a lot of missing data. So, a person has already uh, uh, you know made the research and if uh, when you uh, take this data database you find that there is a lot of uh, uh, missing data. Now, what will you do with this? So, these are some of the problems right. So, some of the secondary data let us see internal and external. So, as you understand the word internal is from inside external is from some external uh, environment ok. Now, internal that might be uh, you know something like your internal company records or something which is available ready to use and these are something like which require some processing some request further processing. External reports are like the published materials in uh, journals, magazines, news any, anywhere right materials even uh, newspapers 
computerized databases which you can take from others. What are syndicated services? Syndicated services are basically those services are those services which are uh, <coughs> for example, uh, done or conducted by a firm or an organization and they keep this data with them and on uh, your uh, request or, or according to your requirement, they provide this data to you. Okay. <coughs> so, I have just uh, spoken about it. So, I am not speaking much, not uh, spending time too much. So, uh, for example, this says the published materials, you can see some of the published materials, directories, indexes, statistical data, etcetera, census. Computers databases are online databases, offline databases on the internet which I said social sites and all which is available. Now, this is becoming a hugely, hugely untapped data which uh, companies are you know dying for and you know to understand those data and get uh, you know uh, idea from it. That is why the, that is the biggest reason why today there is a huge demand of data analysts and uh, uh, you know marketing research analysts to understand ki whether from this data can we understand a new trend. Oh yes, suppose a retail uh, owner let us say Walmart comes to know that in a particular time of the day only people are coming right or in a particular time of the day people are tending there is a tendency to bargain more and in a particular time of the day they are more relaxed. So, if I come to know this thing then maybe what I can do is I can have a dynamic pricing in the, uh, in the time when they are more uh, relaxed and I will have a more fixed time you know a kind of a system when they are more in a uh, in a less flexible mood right. <coughs> so, I said that also. So, these are the syndicated sources common pools of data for a commercial value. So, you can buy from somebody right. Okay. So, these are already done. So, already this has been collected by somebody some syndicate uh, some organization and you can buy it from them at a uh, some uh, price. Okay. Now, from here we will go into the uh, research error as I have been saying always a researcher has to uh, understand that research has its own problems or scope of uh, uh, let us say the problems or I can say where could be the errors lying okay. where could the error be lying in during any research. Okay. So, if you conduct a if you go with an error then there is a chance that your entire outcome might be affected that bias might creep in. Okay. So, what are the potential sources let us see this total error can be broken up into two parts random and non random okay N random and not now let's see this random sampling error and non random sampling error so random sampling error is something like when you are collecting the data in a uh, in a manner in a, uh, in, a uh, in a randomly there could be some uh, selection uh, choice uh, sorry selection problem right. So, this is called a bias created in the process of selecting the respondent right. Then comes the non uh, random or non sampling rather not exactly uh, non random sorry you can say uh, you can say non sampling error right. So, something that is that means in one way if you understand this is something connected to the sample this is not connected to the sample non sampling ok. I hope this is clear non sampling. <coughs> So, in the non sampling there are several kinds of again biases for example, there is a response bias and a non response bias non response okay, non response bias. Now, let us see this researcher error interviewer error and respondent error. <coughs> now, response error is linked with all the errors that are connected to the way the response is getting collected. Okay. Now, it could be from the researcher, how has the researcher conducted an error let us see. <coughs> so, there is a information surrogate information error right, there is a measurement error defining the population uh, in a wrong way. You have not even defined the population, what is your population suppose the researcher is not very clear see it looks very simple, but when you go into any live real uh, case of uh, research you will get into a complicacy of understanding the even the population sometimes right. What is the sampling frame first let us understand what is sampling frame, the sampling frame is nothing but it is like uh, 
you can say a sampling frame is a uh, is a uh, is a frame or a uh, uh, is a is a uh, source from where you collect the data right for example uh, to collect the information about people a directory telephone directory could be a source right a uh, yellow page could be a source right so that is what is a sampling frame it's like a photo frame only right uh, finally the data analysis error now you most of the people are actually bothered about the data analysis error now this is only one out of it out of the many so there are other errors also one has to be very clear so data analysis error for example as i had said earlier what kind of uh, what is the right research tool that statistical tool that should be used that is suppose you have instead of doing a uh, you know test t test you have done, or uh, instead of doing an anova analysis of variance you are doing a t test right so uh, instead of an anova i am saying you are doing a t test now that is wrong you should not be doing there is no reason although it can be done multiple t tests can be uh, uh, said as a anova only but or suppose there is a this is a case of uh, let us say uh, ANCOVA right which is analysis of covariance similarly we have suppose multiple dependent a man, MANOVA right or similarly a MANCOVA now what is your requirement accordingly you have to decide right selecting the respondent while in taking an interview you may uh, make a mistake in selecting a wrong respondent your respondent should have been suppose you are you have to collect data for <coughs> in the age group of let us say up to 40 now and only let us say male but by, by, but are not understanding that clearly you have collected data of male but in the age group of 55 or 60 so that is not fitting your data right it's not your requirement so selecting the right respondent is again a critical challenge where you can commit mistakes which can be a fatal error how have you questioned now what do you mean by how do you question first of all is the question a valid question has the question been asked in the right frame of right way has the scale that has been offered to the respondent good enough to explain the process how have you recorded the uh, problems now recording now suppose uh, while conducting a research you have only heard it you have listened to it and you have not noted down and after that when you come to your place you have noted something which is exactly not what the respondent had said so that is a big problem cheating error is something that i do not want to discuss because it is completely although it is a very large problem nowadays researchers in order to publish papers in order to prove uh, you know effective to their bosses in a, a firm they try to give all data or all kind of inferences which are uh, which would be liked right but that is not correct that might not be correct but it can be it may be liked so that is the difference right similarly <coughs> uh, i have seen scholars even fudging data so data fudging is a crime data fudging is a crime so you should not be uh, putting in the wrong data suppose you do not have an understanding of the data either go back to the field or there are research techniques through which you can correct that problem right for example we can handle missing data if there is suppose any missing data or your data is not normal is not behaving in a normal manner so you can be you can convert into a normal distribution right so finally respondent error now the respondent might not be in a position to answer you you have asked about a very scientific question to a person who does not understand that so that is an inability or he is not willing to answer so you have to be very one has to be very careful as a researcher okay <coughs> so this is what uh, we have said so the total error is a variation between the true mean value of the population and the sample mean that's what i was i have said in the earlier classes also if you remember so the population mean this is mu given by the sample mean x bar so now x bar minus mu should actually be tending towards zero should be tending towards zero that should be approximating towards zero but that means what they are similar but actually it does not happen it will never happen but you will always hope that this should be as close as possible right and if the if there is a difference then thus this difference whatever the difference lies will be termed as will be termed as the error will be termed as the error so uh, right <coughs> Now, uh, random sampling is the uh, we just said. Then uh, these are the other sources of sampling errors. That is, for example, the defining the problem and all these things, right? 
Now let us see just a bit. The non response error is when the respondents included in the sample do not respond well, okay. And response error arises when they give you inaccurate answers, right. There are misrecorded or misanalyzed, okay. So, response error could be a server information error, as I said, the variation between the information needed and the information sought by the researcher. So, the problem this is please be under please understand once we had discussed in the class about symptoms and problems. So, this is what I am talking about you have <laughs> you have caught the tail of an elephant and you are saying or the researcher is trying to say that this is not an elephant the or the elephant is like a rope. No, that is not it. So, you have to understand ki there is a difference between what the research problem needs and what have you collected right. So, some this occurs because many times of the poor understanding of the researcher. So, that can only be corrected through proper literature review. The more you read, the more you discuss with experts in the area, the better there will be clarity. Okay. Similarly, measurement error, how you have measured it, right? <coughs> the process. Defining the population, right, uh, at hand is uh, also a problem, right. You are, as I said about the case of uh, a male, uh, you know, the um, over the age group, higher age group. So, these are some of the errors, right. So, by interviewer, so respondent selection error occurs when the interviewer select respondents other than those specified by the sampling design, right. Questioning error, how you have questioned, which we also discussed, how you have recorded, hearing, interpreting and recording. Cheating is what fabricates the answers, there is no you know, uh, if you want to cheat, nobody can help you. It is expected, it is universally expected that a researcher is honest or will be honest. If somebody is not honest, then it is a problem, okay. Uh, so, this is where I will stop, right. So, the inability and unwillingness and this is all. Thank you for this session, we will meet in the next session. Thank you very much.